Hi, in this session, we are going to start a new chapter on electromagnetic waves. Now you might be wondering why I have written this topic in the middle of the screen rather than the usual top position. The answer to this question is that if we want to understand and have a good understanding about electromagnetic waves, we need to study about multiple aspects of them together in a parallel fashion rather than the regular sequential fashion. So what we will be doing here is this, that we will understand each and individual aspect of this topic and then towards the end we will summarize how these different aspects connect together and make sense as a whole. So what we will begin with is the general idea of a wave. So wave, when you would have studied about waves in the chapter that was dedicated on this concept, you would have known that wave is nothing but a disturbance that is traveling across space and is also varying with time. Then we had also studied about one particular example called the displacement wave. Let's see how a displacement wave looks like. So here we have a string and if you see that if we provide some disturbance at one end of the string, this disturbance is traveling across the length of the string. So this is the general notion of a wave. However, if we want to study it scientifically, we need to get more specific. What we need to get or rather derive out of this particular phenomena is the equation that is governing this kind of a motion. So the next thing that we are going to study now is equation of a wave. So again, we will not get into the derivations because we just had a chapter that was entirely dedicated on waves. Here, we will start with the equation. The equation of a wave let's say we had this displacement wave here, is given as y equals y naught times sine of omega into t minus x upon v. Let's try to under the, understand this equation for a minute. In the left hand side, I have this term y, which represents the displacement in the perpendicular direction of this string. And then, we are equating this y or rather we are calculating an expression for y, you can see that this expression is kind of a sinusoidally varying quantity. There are th three things. One is the amplitude of this displacement. y naught is the peak value of the displacement. Then we have this frequency of oscillation which is given as omega and the other quality about this wave equation is its velocity v. So, if we want to understand this in depth, let's consider these three thought experiments. First of all, let's consider only one specific position of x. Let's fix a point in the string. Then what we have done essentially is we have made this quantity as a constant and the equation now becomes equal to y equals y naught sine omega t minus some constant. So this equation has now started resembling a sinusoidally varying function with respect to time. Let's see how this point behaves with respect to time. We have fixed this point. You can see that this point is undergoing a simple harmonic motion. So this is one property of the waves that each and every point in a wave is undergoing some kind of a simple harmonic motion. Next, what we will do is we will fix time this time and keep x as a variable. So this time the equation becomes a sine function in x, what we have here is a snapshot of this wave at a particular time instant. And you can see that it resembles the graph of a sine function. The other thing, the third thing that we can notice about this wave is that due to this entire term t minus x upon v, what is essentially happening is that this wave is propagating or traveling in the x direction or the direction of the length of the string. Let's visualize this again. What's happening here is, if we make this string, the image of the string moving again, we provided disturbance at this end, and then 
we are seeing that this disturbance is traveling. There are still undisturbed lengths of the string, but this disturbance is slowly coming and taking them over. So what essentially is happening is, energy is propagating in this wave, in the x direction. So we've learned three key aspects of a wave. So far, we have looked at a displacement wave, where we took an example of a string and saw what happens when we provide some disturbance at one end of the string. And then we qualitatively as well as quantitatively analyze the equation and the effect that equation will have. This helped us know basic properties about the waves. Now let's move ahead. The other idea that I want you to be exposed to is this idea that a wave need not necessarily be a displacement wave. So waves can be of multiple form. So in the chapter of waves, we have seen another example of a wave wherein we were looking at sound waves. Let's see how sound waves look like. So in this animation, you can see a sound wave is nothing but a disturbance in pressure. So what we are seeing here is across the space, there are regions where there is high pressure and then there are regions where there is low pressure. And these regions are interchanging. So a region which is of high pressure at this particular point of time, in some time after this point of time, it becomes a region of low pressure. There is one important difference between a displacement wave and a sound wave, which is this, that in a displacement wave, the disturbance is ha happening in a direction perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. Hence, it's also called a transverse wave. Whereas in case of a sound wave, the displacement or the variation in pressure is happening in the direction of the wave propagation itself. So it's called a longitudinal wave. But having said that, Keeping aside that difference, you can see that the mathematics remains the same. You will use an equation of almost a similar form to analyze this pressure wave. In effect, the equation will be P equals P naught sine of omega T minus XV. So we've learned this very interesting thing, thing about waves. That is, this particular equation of wave its mathematics remains the same. However, now these individual terms y and p, they mean different things. In case of a displacement wave, we had y representing the dis displacement. And in case of a pressure wave, we have p representing the pressure. And once we've freed this idea of wave from a conventional displacement wave, we've already seen that there can be waves in the form of pressure disturbance. Now, we are in a position to understand that there could be other varying quantities that produce waves. Specifically, we will study a specific kind of wave which is called electromagnetic waves. In shorthand, we can call it as EM waves. So you might guess what electromagnetic waves might be all about. So in electromagnetic waves, what we have is this time a variation in electric field and the magnetic field and they are coupled with each other. So we have coupled and varying electric and magnetic fields together and they are propagating in one direction. Let's take this animation here. You can see that the direction of the electric field here is in the plus y direction. The direction of the magnetic field is in the plus z direction and the wave itself is propagating in the x direction. And you can see that these individual electric fields and magnetic fields, they are in the form of waves, right? Because if you take a snapshot in time, they represent a sine function. And if you take one particular point, there is an SHM that this particular point is undergoing. That goes for both the electric field as well as the magnetic field. So in summary, an electromagnetic wave is a wave which has a disturbance of varying electric fields and magnetic fields accompanied with each other. And that entire disturbance is traveling along a particular direction. Now, you might ask, why are we studying electromagnetic waves? 
we have displacement waves in practice we have sound waves in practice do we have electromagnetic waves in practice the answer to this question is in fact the electromagnetic waves are more pervasive than the displacement waves and the pressure waves the only difference is this the displacement wave can be easily visualized hence we studied this for first it was very simple to study them then came pressure waves because even they could be analyzed very easily electromagnetic waves what they have is varying electric and magnetic fields so it's very difficult to visualize them hence we are studying them in the last but at the same time it is very important to remember this quality about them that they are more pervasive than the sound waves and displacement waves and we have them in different varieties for example light sometimes is considered as wave and that form of a wave is an electromagnetic waves then we have heat waves even they are electromagnetic waves and then if you are a science buff you would have heard about x rays infrared rays ultraviolet rays they are all examples of electromagnetic waves so now it is a natural question to ask that can the equation of these waves also be represented like this the answer is yes we have just seen in the animation that they look almost exactly like this particular variation here so what we have is even em waves will have a similar equation so now we will write the equation for em waves however before writing those equations let's just know about one special property about all these types of em waves this property is that in vacuum they all travel with a, with the same speed the speed of propagation be it for light waves be it for heat waves be it for x rays it's a constant and that constant is given as c equals 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second so if we analyze this equation we see that there is a term v here which represents the velocity of propagation of this wave so when we write the equation for electromagnetic waves we have to replace that v with an with a c and this time we have variation in two fields or two quantities one is the electric field and the other is the magnetic field hence the equation here we have a set of two equations rather so we have a varying electric field the equation will be same as the equation for any other wave it is e not times sin omega t minus x c this time so this is a wave that is traveling in the x direction and it is accompanied with a similar variation in magnetic field so magnetic field we can write b equals b not sin of omega times t minus xc we have seen how these waves look like the other question you might ask me is this that let's say if the velocity of propagation of all these waves is the same what sets them apart what is the difference between a light wave and a heat wave or an x ray well the answer to this question is if you look into this equation there is another term called omega or the frequency of these waves so for different frequency we obtain different properties of these electromagnetic waves and sometimes it behaves like a light ray or a visible wave visible ray and then sometimes it behaves like a heat wave sometimes it behaves like an x ray so in fact so far we have discovered so many different types of electromagnetic waves that there is an entire spectrum that exists of these waves you can see that in this spectrum if we have if we draw the spectrum in the increasing order of frequency that is in the left hand side what we have is we have waves having low frequency and in the right hand side we have waves having high frequency what you observe here is that here we have electromagnetic waves these waves having low frequency are called radio waves then as we move along this frequency spectrum the next thing that we have is here it is infrared rays and then this small patch here this patch consists of visible rays so here we see all the color colors that is violet indigo blue green etc 
and then if we move across the spectrum we see first we have ultraviolet rays and then we have x-rays and so on so in this spectrum all these waves have different properties we will study about each of these waves in some way or the other but i think it is already too much of an information for an introductory session let's just summarize what all we have learned in this session and then we will see other things in the next one so what we did was we started with a general idea of a wave we understood that it is nothing but a disturbance that is varying across space and time then we took an example of a displacement wave then we tried to analyze the displacement wave with the help of a precise equation this is the form of the equation and next what we did was we said that a wave doesn't need necessarily be a displacement wave it could be a variation in some other quantity for example we looked at a sound wave where the varying quantity was not displacement but pressure next when we freed this idea of a wave from a displacement and we came to know this that even other quantities could vary to form a wave then we looked at electromagnetic waves this time the varying quantities here are electric fields and the magnetic fields and it is also propagating in certain direction then we saw that there are different types of electromagnetic waves all these electromagnetic waves have a common property that is the speed of propagation is the same in vacuum that constant is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second but they act differently they have different properties and those different properties are born out of having different frequencies here we saw that there is an entire spectrum of electromagnetic waves that exist starting from waves having low frequencies to waves having so much of frequencies so all right this wraps up the introduction about electromagnetic waves let's study about individual topics in depth from next session onwards